So today we are going to go back into this brand new series we started called Learning to Listen, where we are um, diving into this undeniable truth in Scripture that God speaks. Throughout the Old Testament, it is very clear that God continues to speak to individuals, to a nation, to a people. That's why the phrase, and the Lord said, appears so many times. And it continues into the New Testament. Jesus said 15 times, let those who have ears hear. And so it's just this continual reaching out from the Spirit of God through all of time to let us know he wants to speak to us. And so I'm, I'm going through a series to help you hone your ear to his voice. Last week, we started with really a theological kind of understanding of, does God still speak? So if you've ever wondered, does God speak or does he want to speak to me, you need to go listen to that message. Today, we're going to continue on with it, though, and I, I want to share today the ways God speaks, the ways God speaks. And so if you've ever had this, this was that me or was that God, this is going to be the perfect message for you, okay? Um, but we, I think we just have to continue to acknowledge communication is one of the most challenging things about life. Um, I, I mean, Kayla and I have been married for 16 years, and we still struggle to communicate with one another. Um, it, men, there are two things you need to know about women. I have no idea what they are, <laughs> but I'm told there are two things, okay? Um, no, I mean, honestly, Kayla and I can say things to each other, and I think we're using the same language, and we are not. You know, I, I, she'll, like, I'll use the word fine. And she hates that word. Like, she'll come out and say, how does this outfit look? And I'll say, fine. To me, fine means adequate, good, we're late, let's go. You know, um, to her, it might as well mean you look like garbage. You know, I mean, it's an insult, a curse word. Uh, just one word can be so misunderstood. And that's considering we can see each other, how difficult it is. Well, how much more is it true that when we are following by faith a God whom we cannot see, and yet we're trying to communicate and hear him? So, um, you know, I, I think that a lot of people, because it's so challenging, have developed what I would call a spiritual inferiority complex. They hear other people say things like, um, well, God said to me, and, and then I heard the Lord. And in that moment, I clearly heard God say, and they start asking, well, well why isn't God speaking to me? And it creates this complex where we think that God speaks to some people and he doesn't speak to other people. But, um, but one of my favorite passages in all the scriptures, is what we're going to unpack today, and it's for this reason. It's about an Old Testament character named Samuel who did hear God, but he struggled his way through it. He didn't start out hearing clearly. He had to struggle to understand the voice of God. Uh, Samuel was a young boy who was an intern for a high priest named Eli, and the Bible says in this particular moment that he was uh, laying down for bed and he heard someone call his name, Samuel. So he got up, went across the way to Eli and said, um, what do you need? Eli said, what do you mean, what do I need? He goes, well, I heard you call my name. He said, I never called your name. They chalk it up to just a misunderstanding. Um, Samuel goes and lays back down. It happens again. He hears the voice call Samuel. So he gets back up, goes back over to Eli, says, what do you need? He said, well, I don't need anything. He said, I clearly heard you shout my name. What do you need? And, um, and Eli says, I didn't call your name. And he goes back and lays down again. It happens a third time. And that's where we'll pick up in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. It says, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And a third time, the Lord, so it was God trying to speak to Samuel, uh, said, Samuel. And Samuel got up again, and he went to Eli, and he said, here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized, being more mature, he realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there. And called him as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel. Um, most scholars believe Samuel was 11 years old in this moment. And I just love that. I love that in the pr most pronounced account of how God speaks to a human being, he did not choose a professional, he chose a child. 
And I love that he came to him four times because all of it communicates this. God doesn't speak to special people. He speaks to everyone, children, and he'll keep speaking till he gets a, to- uh, gets a hold or gets your attention. I love this, that really what this tells us is God's not looking for special people. He's just, there's a practice. There's a, there's a tug and a back and a forth. There is an intentionality and a trying and failing and starting again that comes with learning the voice of God. I love that because it's very much how we live. Listen, God wants to speak to you. He doesn't want just to speak to people with titles. He wants to speak to you, but there's going to be a struggle in it. There's going to be some back and forth. But if you'll give enough time and intentionality, you too can hear God's voice. And now, one of the realities of hearing God's voice is we have to come to this recognition before we talk about the ways God speaks. We have to come to this, that the idea that um, God speaks to us, but that we do control a lot of what we can hear based on how we steward our own ears. The Bible tells us when you chose to follow Christ, you were born again. And in the same way you were born once physically, and you had um, certain body parts that enable you to, to communicate, when you're born again spiritually, you also are given capabilities to communicate. Um, for example, you're given spiritual eyes of faith. That means you can believe for something you cannot see physically, but through eyes of faith, you can obtain it. Well, the same thing's true, you're given spiritual ears. You're given the ability to hear the voice of God. But you don't hear God with your head or your physical ears. You hear him in your spirit or your heart. But in the same way that your physical ears can grow dim or deaf, your spiritual ears can grow dim and deaf. And so if you, you know, for some of you, you're here today, the issue's not, is God speaking? The issue is your ears need cleaning. You say, well, what stops up spiritual ears? Well, there's a couple things. First of all, pride. Um, Prayerlessness to God is saying, I don't need you. It's an act of pride. When you go through life making all the decisions, you don't ever consult God, you don't ever consider what he would want or direct, you are basically communicating to God, you're not needed. I've got enough wisdom, understanding, I can handle this. And when we communicate that way to God, he doesn't speak to us. He doesn't throw his word to people who don't value his word. So self-dependency leads to spiritual deafness. Another thing that can happen is, um, is, is what we'd call just fear. Um, many of us live by fear. It's the most guiding or directing force in our life, but the problem is that's not the way God speaks. Many of you are scared to hear God's voice because you're afraid he would cause you to do some, uh, call you to do something unpopular or that it's uncomfortable, so you don't want to hear God's voice. Some of you fear hearing God's voice because you think he's going to be harsh and judgmental, and, and you should listen to last week's message when I talk about that, but, but listen, God's voice does not work through fear. As a matter of fact, he pronounced and said, I don't give you a spirit of fear. As a matter of fact, you can always tell God's voice by peace, and you can always tell the enemy's voice by fear. God's voice is the most kind, loving, long-suffering, patient voice you will ever hear in your life. You don't have anything to fear with it. Um, Another way that we kind of stop up our spiritual ears is this. We just keep what's called willing sin. Okay, We all sin. Nobody here is perfect. Okay, but willing sin is different than sin in the fact is that you know it's wrong, you know God's called you away from it, and you are willingly choosing not to leave. It's an attitude, an action, a habit. It's something that you go, you know what, I just want to keep this in my life. Could be because it makes you feel comfortable, could be because you just enjoy it. Whatever it is, though, you know God's called you to a higher level of living, but you're choosing to stay lower. It, the context of this passage we're unpacking is this, that Eli, the Bible says, has not heard God in a long time. As a matter of fact, here's the way the Bible describes it. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Why was the word of the Lord rare? Well, if you read in context, Eli had two sons. His two sons were also a part of the priesthood, and they openly disobeyed God's commands. They were corrupt, they would steal from people, they were sexually promiscuous, and God again and again told them to stop. And they looked at God and said, you know what, we don't want to stop. So here's what in effect happened is they chose to keep their sin, and God said, well, then you can't have my voice. When we choose to disobey God, we're choosing to keep sin, and we're also choosing not to receive his voice. It's just just a reality. 
And, but the most common is this, busyness. Most of the time, we don't hear God because of the pace, the ambient noise, the distractions, the overstimulation that we live with. And I, I, everybody's that way. People who are retired deal with it. People who haven't even started their career deal with it. People who are raising families deal with it. And, and it can almost feel defeating because we think to ourselves, so many people are pulling on me that it's, it's just, I feel like I'm not even in control. But you need to know your pace is your responsibility. And that when we move so fast that our, our ears get deaf to the voice of God, we've went into a, a pretty dangerous place. Um, you know, years ago, we were, uh, had just launched into a big year here at the church. Great things were happening. I was grinding. I mean, I'm, I'm preaching sermons. We're conducting events. We're making decisions about campuses. I'm going out and speaking. I mean, it's fast paced and we're accomplishing a lot. It's a great season, but, um, but it wore me out pretty quick. And by the time the spring came up, I was going at such a, a, a fast pace, meaning that I, I was just going through the motions just to survive that I got to the place where it was hard to hear God. I remember sitting down to try to um, get God's direction for sermons, and it was incredibly difficult to hear what he wanted to do. Now, that may not sound like a big deal to you, but listen, if I can't hear God, I can't lead you. It's a big deal. Okay. And so I'm in there grinding. It's taking much longer to get messages. It's, it feels like it's, it's no longer um, excitement. It's work. And, um, and I was about three weeks from a planned vacation. And I remember those last three weeks, I mean, it was, it was like clawing my way through those three weeks and hearing God's voice at no intimacy with him, very, very just uh, dry spiritually. So I get finally on vacation. I make it to this vacation. And I remember uh, getting there and kind of having this sense of, okay, we can reset. Well, on the first day, I get up to read my Bible, and it, it, it felt like I was reading a history book, like no spiritual dynamic to it at all. Second day, I get up to read and pray, and it feels like I'm just sitting there by myself, like no spiritual vibrancy at all. Third day, as soon as I open my eyes, I hear the Lord speak to my heart, and he goes, good morning. And I thought, there you are. And I was a little perturbed. Because I'm sitting here, God, I'm out here leading your church. You're, you're hiding. You're not talking. And the Lord taught me something at that moment. He took my, my mind to this passage of Scripture as I was laying in the bed, and here's what he said. Where was Samuel when I spoke to him? Samuel was laying down. And the Lord taught me a very valuable lesson. He says, rest is where I reveal my voice. Hurry, hardens your ears. Makes you hard of hearing. What if, what if, what if? You don't have a clue what to do where to go, who to partner with, who to date, like well, how to spend the money. Like you don't have a clue. And it's not because God isn't offering direction. It's just you're going so fast, you're hard of hearing. Now here, here's the good news. Of the things I just named, all of them can be fixed today. By you in your heart deciding, I will posture myself to make intentional time to hear God. That's all it requires. God is so gracious and so kind that in the same way he came to Samuel four times to get his attention, he will repeatedly come to us because he wants to communicate with us. And all we have to do is just move our hearts into a position to say, God, I want to receive from you. I'm, I'm willing to put this away. I'm willing to put that away. I'm willing to engage you. And when we do that, our hearts open to him. And listen, that is no small thing. It is huge because you don't have a problem that God doesn't have the solution for. God knows everything. He knows what you need to do with your kids. He knows where you need to go in this, this new venture. He understands the patterns of this economy. There is nothing that you need to know that God doesn't know. He has the solution for every problem you have encountered. You just have to be able to hear his voice. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you the four most common ways God speaks. Um, now, these are the most common. It's not exclusive. There are a few things uh, that biblically God can speak through that I did not include. just don't have enough time today. But let me say, I'm giving you four. Okay, now, now listen very closely. They're not four independent ways. They're put together so that one is the foundation, two is a foundation, three is a foundation, four is a foundation. So here's what I'm saying. They, they're not disconnected, they're connected. So don't approach this like, well, I just want to hear a number four. Because what I'm saying is if you can't hear no, the way number one and two work, you'll never hear four. Okay, so, so I'm teaching you how to build a framework for hearing God. Okay, here's the very first way God speaks to us, the Bible. Okay, 
The Bible is not a collection of moral codes. The Bible is not a collection of historical accounts. The Bible is not a, a collection of just human wisdom. The Bible describes itself as inspired. Okay, inspired in the original language means God breathed. So, so let me tell you how different the Bible is from every other book that's ever been written. When you speak, what happens to your breath? You, when you, you, you speak, your breath is, it comes out with on the words, right? When God spoke, his breath carried those words directly to the page. So, so let me say it this way. When you read scripture, you're hearing God speak. Okay, this is, we start here. There is no hearing God before the Bible. Okay, and, and that's even true for Samuel. 1 Samuel 3.21 says, The Lord continued to appear in Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. Okay, um, if you've ever seen in Scripture the phrase, the word of the Lord or the word of God, um, there's usually, at the Greek level, the original language, there's two words that are being used. And you have to know which one is which in order to understand what, what's happening. Um, the first word is rhema. The second word is logos. Okay, Rhema is a specific time of way God speaks. So have you ever been reading the Bible and it feels like all of a sudden a verse or passage leaps off the page and you're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I was asking. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was facing. That's the direction I needed. Like it just feels like all the other words fade away. And in that moment, there is the word of God for you. Okay. That's called the rhema word of God. That's when um, you're not just taking in scripture. The Holy Spirit is taking scripture and revealing to you exactly how it applies to your life. Do you know why that's never happened with another book? Because the Bible's the only book when you read it, you're sitting with the author. Okay. As you read what's on that page, the Holy Spirit's present. And he can, in a moment, speak and show you exactly where you're supposed to be, where this applies. Okay, that's the rain. There's nothing better than that. When you don't know what to do with your kids and you open the Bible and all of a sudden there's what you should do. You don't know how, how to, to spend your money, suddenly you get direction. I mean, there's nothing better than a rainbow word from God. The other one is called Logos, and here's what it is. It's when you read and you don't understand a thing about it. Like it doesn't leap off the page. It feels like you're reading maybe a history book. And um, this is often what happens with our daily reading plans. You know, we have a daily reading plan. If you've not joined that, definitely get that today. Go online. We'll get but it's just where you go through the Bible. And you, sometimes you're reading a bunch of names and you're like, what does this have to do with anything? Okay, so first let me just tell you that this is valuable too. And I'm going to tell you why. But, but can we just acknowledge this? I feel like sometimes as preachers, you know what we do? We go, we build our life on this word. And you go, yeah. Um, but can we just acknowledge like, we're saying, yeah, to a lot we don't understand. Like, this is not an easy book. It is a complicated book. Uh, it, rabbis, ancient rabbis said that every single verse of this has 70 faces or 600,000 different meanings. And, and let's just not, this is a long book. Like, it's 1,200 pages in most translations. It's an old book, nearly two, two to 3,000 years in most passages. And it is a very culturally different book than the way we live today. This didn't happen in Jefferson County. And, 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 and like, it's hard to understand what's happening. Okay, but even in all of that, we take it in. And here's why. Um, you have probably read this before and thought, well, that was, that was pointless. It was not pointless. Because when you take in the word of God, here's what's happening. You're not just taking it in your head. You're taking it in your heart. And when you take it in your heart, your head forgets what you read, but your heart doesn't. Your heart remembers every scripture, every study, every sermon you've ever heard. And it stores it in your heart, scripture says. Think of your heart as a toolbox. That every time you take in a verse, you're putting a new tool to fix a future problem in your heart. And the Bible tells us that when we encounter those problems, the Holy Spirit comes and he goes into the toolbox we have stocked. And that he pulls out the proper tool for the problem we are currently facing. 
And that is the reason that your Bible reading plan may have you in Leviticus, but you're bound in fear one day, but all of a sudden Philippians 4, 7 comes to your mind that the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It is the reason that you may be one day in Galatians, but all of a sudden out of your heart comes the reminder as you're facing a need, Philippians 4, 19, that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It is the reason that you may be in Leviticus and have no clue what you are reading and you're ready to give up but all of a sudden Philippians 4 13 that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength bubbles up in your heart because you have stored God's Word in your heart you have prepared a toolbox for problems you don't even know you're going to have that the Holy Spirit comes at the right time and pulls them out now here's the thing it's the Holy Spirit's job to fix your problems with the tools that are in your heart but it's your heart, your job to make sure your heart is filled with tools so he can speak. And so a lot of people are looking for a rhema word, but they don't have one because they've never continued in taking in the logos word that stores God's word in their heart. Okay. Now, here's the second one uh, way God speaks. This is my favorite one. Gifted communicators. Um. Some of y'all didn't get that or he is not funny. One of the two. I can't tell. (laughs) You know what I love about this story? Samuel didn't hear God by himself. You're not designed to hear God by yourself. He had the seasoned, mature help from Eli. You need an Eli in your life, a pastor, a teacher, someone who could come and help you understand the word of God. You need that. And and that's why Samuel spoke of that. And two things happen when, obviously you believe this, you're here today. Two things happen when you sit under preaching or teaching and you have a pastoral voice. First one is it broadens your understanding. I'm going to take you to some passages you're going to skip. I'm going to take you into some some topics that you may, you know, go past. I'm going to give you understanding that you don't have because it's my job to gain that understanding and give it to you. And and this is why I'm encouraging you, don't just make Sunday the only day that you hear from the Word of God. Like when you, you get in the car, listen to a sermon, a podcast, re-listen to old messages, and, and, and you consider this, most of you get in the car and turn on Spotify or you listen to the news. Listen, why, why do you care what's going on in Washington and L.A. And, and D.C.? You need to know what God's saying for today. You know, you can't fix anything in Washington, but you can fix something going on in your life with a word from the Lord. So you need to take in the word of God consistently because you can broaden your understanding. But also, when you're under a, a biblical teacher or preacher, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow your faith in an exponential way. Because you're going to see there's a dynamic to this more than just like a lesson like you get at school. Um, for example, um, but, but let me say, that, say it this way. I didn't say talented communicators. I said gifted. Okay, um, I'm not a talented communicator. I'm gifted, and I'm gifted by the Holy Spirit to do this, Amen. which is why this is what happens. Um, many times, countless times, I have some of you come up to me and you'll go, Pastor, I'm just telling you, it feels like you, I mean, it feels like you've been living in our house. <laughs> I mean, it just felt like that sermon was just for me. I mean, some of you, I, I had somebody recently say, Pastor, do you have cameras in our house? And all I'm saying is you need to fold that laundry I can see. No, I'm kidding. I, I don't have cameras in your house. I can't see what's going on in your house, but God can. And that's the reason you don't want a talented communicator. You want a gifted communicator because um, the Holy Spirit in me possesses all the gifts needed to speak exactly. There's not just a gift of speaking. There's a gift of hearing. It is the most amazing thing. People will say to me, when you said, and they'll say something, and I go, I didn't say that. And no, 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 I heard it. And, and I'll go back and show them in the notes, that ain't in here. And, and you know what that is? That's the gift of hearing. That the Holy Spirit can take something I say and customize it and apply it to your specific situation. It's a dynamic. And when that happens, you just walk away and go, oh, my gosh, God is speaking. Now, now I want to say this. Um, a couple weeks ago, um, I took off several weeks from preaching to you to finish the manuscript of a book. And, um, and, and when I came back, several of you kind of said to me, oh, Pastor, I came, and I was, just, I was disappointed you weren't here. Okay, so, so let, me, let me pastor you for a minute. Um, the power is not in a person. It's in a passage. L- listen, notice Eli had the title but a boy had the word. And all I'm saying is don't get caught up on people. 
As long as whoever's standing here opens this book, you can hear from God exactly what you need for that week. We don't get hung up on personalities and I prefer this and I prefer that. Listen, I may get hit by a bus one day. And you still need to be able to hear God, and that's because he speaks through gifted communicators. Okay? Now, here's the, here's the next one. Um, I, I want to spend a minute on this. Personal impressions. Um, we receive the general counsel of God through the Bible and teachers. We receive the specific counsel of God through impressions. Okay, so let, let me show it to you in Scripture, John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit will be your teacher and will bring to your, help me with this word, mind, all that I've said to you. A bring to your mind means that God's going to give you ideas, gut feelings, hunches, or impressions. Have you ever had a, a moment where you just, something washed over you quickly and you thought, I should say that, I should do this, I should go there. And then here's what you followed up with. Is that me or is that God? And, and, and that's normal. I love this passage. We think God's voice comes with this booming array of fireworks. It doesn't. God's voice was so familiar to Samuel. He just thought it was Eli. And when you hear the voice of the Lord, it's so familiar, you're thinking, is that a song lyric? Is that, is that a sermon? Is that something I heard one time? It's so, it's so subtle. Now, what you have to do, though, is when you're asking yourself this question, is that God or is that me? You have to have a framework for deciding that. Here's the framework, the first two. Okay. Does what I'm, does this impression I have go against Scripture? If it ain't, if it's contrary to Scripture, that's you, that ain't God. Does this impression look like Jesus? If it don't sound like something he'd say or do, it's you, it ain't him. Does this impression draw my flesh forward or faith out of me? If it's flesh, it ain't, it ain't God, it's you. Does this give me peace or does it cause me frustration or concern? God works through peace. So when I have the framework of the first two, then I can start to hear God through impressions. And, and listen, if, you, if, if the impression you're feeling makes it through those, that framework, here's what you need to do. Act on it. Act on it. Um, don't ignore it. I had a friend named Addison. He and his wife uh, were newlyweds, which is another way of saying they were poor. And... <laughs> They moved to Colorado, and he said when we moved there, we were so grateful to move there in February because we didn't have the money to buy any lawn equipment. He said in February that you can't see the grass, all you need is a snow shovel, and that's about what our budget could, could, could take. So they moved to um, Colorado, and, but, and they get their house set up, but then all of a sudden spring starts coming, grass starts growing, and he's got to do something. He said, we really didn't have the money for it, but I go to Lowe's one day and start looking because I need to buy a lawnmower. And he said, I'm looking around at all these different models. And he said, you know, my testosterone's pumping as I'm zero turn and big engines and all that. And he goes, but I know in my mind, we can barely afford the cheapest option. So he said, I kind of, you know, I walked down and I, I began to load it on my cart. And he said, all of a sudden, I just had this thought that said, why don't you ask me for what you really want? And he said, it was so strange that I thought, why would I think that? He said, I, I continued to put it on the cart. And he said, it came again. And he said, I thought, is God speaking to me? He said, so I stood there for a few seconds, and he said, I just decided to go, God, I want that one. Will you give me this lawnmower? And he said, all of a sudden, just kind of peace came over him. And he said, I really, I was a bit confused by it, but he said, okay, um, I'm going to give it, you know, may, maybe this is a thing, maybe it's not. He did not purchase the lawnmower, he left. Three days later, he got a call from a guy who he had not heard from in, um, I think he said about a year, and he's an old friend, and the guy said, hey, I want to let you know we're moving to Florida. He said, by the way, there's some stuff we're not going to be able to pack up. He said, maybe you would want some of it. I know you just moved here. He said, um, we've got a lawnmower. Do you need a lawnmower? He said, well, yeah, I do. He said, what do you want for it? He goes, ah, nothing. He said, I feel like God wants us to give it to you. And he said, why don't you come over and see it? So he went over. Sure enough, as he walked up in the driveway, it's the exact lawnmower that he asked God for. Now, now listen, here's all I'm saying. I, I tell you that story. I could tell you more dramatic stories. I love that God just wanted to speak about a lawnmower. Okay, listen. Those small impressions carry great power. When God speaks to you, even in that tone, he is speaking from an eternal perspective. He knows everything about the economy, about people, and the future. So if God says something, he's not hoping how it will work out. He's already got all the information on it. 
And so if he tells you to do something, he already knows it's going to be blessed. And in addition to that, when you don't ignore those moments with God, but instead you act on them, your spiritual ears get a little bit stronger. A lot of people, the only way God can get a hold of them is he has to shout to get a hold of them. But the people he really trusts, he can whisper in a crowd and they can understand he's speaking. Listen, and a whisper for God is enough to change the whole trajectory of your life. One whisper from God can cause you to no longer walk in an addiction. And it can re, re, just readjust everything about your thinking and the way that you think you need a substance. One whisper from God can give you confidence in a venture you are not qualified for. One whisper from God can give you peace despite the circumstances of a diagnosis or a depending divorce. And listen, one whisper from God can reset your entire life. Do not forget that when the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, it says he spoke. Every time you see creation, it's God saying, I only needed four words to do this. I don't need much to recreate your life. That's the reason we don't ignore these small, small impressions. God can do so much with them. Now, here's the last one, and I've got to hurry. Um, finally, I believe God wants to speak to you and through you through prophetic words. Now, a prophetic word is when God, you hear God on behalf of someone else and you share what God said to help build them up, okay? And, and many of you have received these, some of you have given these, um, but let, I, just want, I just want to say this. Over the last four or five years, um, this particular gift of the Holy Spirit has taken a lot of hits. And it's because there's a bunch of so-called spiritual leaders on social media who really their goal is to gain followers and views, and they have made habit of saying, God said this is going to happen, and then history proves that does not happen. And I get your fatigue with that, but I need to remind you, we don't build theology based on our disappointments. We build theology based on what God's Word says. And here's what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives especially the ability to prophesy. This was not written just to leaders. This was written to the entire body, the entire body of Christ. God wants to speak through you specific, unique things he would only know to encourage someone else. And, and let me just say it this. This is for every believer. Because here's what we, we understand. When we choose to follow Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. Well, we possess the Holy Spirit, but guess what the Holy Spirit possesses? Every gift. So because he lives in you, Anything is possible through you with him. Have you ever been thinking to yourself, you know, I should really call them and just encourage them, or maybe I should send them a text and, and, and you know, it, it'd be encouraging. Have you ever had that thought? Where did you think that thought came from? That's the Holy Spirit. Last time I checked, the devil ain't going around encouraging people. That's the Holy Spirit inviting you into a moment where he could tell you something, have you say something that would end up transforming someone's life because it's so unique and specific to them. And, and he wants to do that through you. And now, here's what you understand. There are, there are, I know that's a stretch for some of you, but there are um, parameters to know if it's God or not. Uh, verse 3 says this, but one who prophesies strengthens, encourages, and comforts other people. So, so let me be clear. Prophecy is not a way of exposing, criticizing, judging people. This is very, by the New Testament standard, prophecy does not tear down, it builds up. Okay, now, but let me just say, when you feel like you have something that God wants to say to someone else, we're taught to weigh it or test it. So let me tell you how to do that. This is not complete, but this will get you started. It's just the ABCs of giving a prophetic word. Here's the first one. Is this affirming? If it's not affirming, it's not, by, it doesn't meet the New Testament um, definition. Just meaning, does, is it going to encourage somebody? Is it going to build them up? Is it going to keep them pushing forward? Is it going to keep them reaching for Christ? Is this affirming? Second thing is, is it um, Bible-based? Is it Bible-based? Is this, am I getting ready to tell them something that looks nothing like what happened in Scripture? Am I getting ready to tell them to do something that doesn't, it, 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 God tells people to do the opposite. If it's not Bible-based, it's not, it's not prophetic word. Here's the last one. Is it Christ-like? I mean, is this what Jesus would do or say to this person? So if it's affirming, it builds them up. If it's according to Scripture, and if it's Christ-like, you probably have something God wants to say through you to someone else. And now here, I'm going to give you one more step. It, it's not D, but it, you can remember it. Just ask yourself before you say it, what's the worst that could happen from this? Right, and then just play that out in your mind. Like, for example, sometimes God speaks to people in pictures. So let's say you have, like, when you see that person, all of a sudden God just puts a glimpse of a waterfall or a, a river in your heart, and you go, Wow, I think God wants to, to, to 
refresh them. Well, that's affirming. Was well, it biblical? Well, yeah, God speaks all the time. You know, he's going to make rivers and deserts, and, and that's, it's very biblical. But, but does it look like Jesus? Well, John 4, Jesus says, you can drink of me and you'll never thirst again, so it looks like Jesus. But let's just say, what's the worst that could happen from going up to somebody and saying, I just feel like God, like a waterfall, is about to refresh you. Well, the worst thing that could happen is you missed God, but they were just encouraged. Not a lot of damage could come from that. Some of your most powerful God moments will come when you allow the Holy Spirit to prophesy something through you. I was in Mobile, Alabama one time, and I was preaching, and in the, the sermon, I told the story of an, uh, a couple who struggled with infertility that God did a miracle and gave them a child. I went through the rest of the sermon, I came to the end, and I was walking off the stage, and the Holy Spirit gripped my heart and said, I want you to go up and share a specific message for a couple struggling with infertility. So I went back, stopped the band, I said, I'm so sorry, I feel like I have to obey God. There's a couple here who, when I shared that story about infertility, something in you leapt today. And I said, um, here's what the Lord says. And I, I, I said about three sentences that were specific about how they felt, what they thought, and what God was going to do. And then I said, I hope you receive that. And I walked off. When I walked off, the pastor came up to me, had tears coming down his face. He said, those three sentences are almost to the letter what I told a couple this week who's struggling with infertility. And he said, right over there they are. And I looked over, and there was a couple. They're holding hands, and they have their hands with tears pouring because God had spoken in their situation. Well, listen, about 18 months later, they welcomed a baby boy. Okay? Now, listen, here's what I love about this. God didn't just give them a baby boy. He gave them a living testament that he speaks. Every time they hear that little boy's voice, they're reminded they can hear God's voice. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 20 says, And from Dan, which was a place, to Beersheba, which was another place, the people esteemed Samuel as a prophet of God. If you read the story of Samuel, he goes from an 11-year-old boy struggling to discern God's voice to someone who lives a lifetime of hearing God, not just for himself, but countless others. That's what God wants to do. Why do you need to hone your voice to God? Because he wants to speak to you, but not just stop there. He wants to speak through you. Your ability to hear him could be life-changing for someone else. So I want you to stand to your feet. I want to pray for you this morning. And here's what I'm going to pray, real simple. Listen to me. I'm very serious about this. God is going to speak to you this week. He's going to. It's just, he's always speaking. It's just if we're hearing. And I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss that impression. For some of you, I don't want you to miss that prophetic word that he wants to give through you. So here's what you do. This week, you've got to take it seriously. You've got to start a Bible reading plan. Because you're not going to know if it's God if, it, if you don't know Scripture. Second thing you're going to do is you've got to, to fill your mind with words from God. Listen to podcasts, messages. Go back and listen to these messages. God's going to speak to you this week. And how you handle that will determine how much more he can say. So I'm going to pray for you that, that you don't miss it, that, that, that he's a little louder than a whisper so that you make sure not to miss it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you um, take this, apply it to our hearts, and Holy Spirit, would you just turn your voice up just a little bit louder this week? Don't let it be so familiar and don't let it be so, so um, um, subtle that they miss it. You're going to speak. May they have ears to hear. And may they have the faith to respond. Those small impressions are going to change some big things this week. Those, those few ideas to encourage someone else, when they open their mouth, it's going to be like a river of a freshness coming to another person. You're going to speak. You want them to hear so that you can do something significant through their life this week. Lord, I bless them, and I thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's turn our hearts back to worship. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope you enjoyed this message you just heard. For more information and other content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon as well so you can be notified every time we upload something new on our channel. Now, while you're here, go ahead and check out past messages and other videos, and we'll see you next time.